Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Secretary Shulkin, in your draft veteran care plan, you outlined a number of pilot projects that sound to me uncomfortably like a proposals that are made by the so-called um, straw man document. Uh, it's from the Commission on Care and by the extreme and to me unacceptable plan put forward by the Concerned Veterans of America and those include creating a VA insurance plan and separating it from care delivery, dividing the governance of a VA insurance plan and the health system, an alternative care model that sends veterans directly to the private sector. The goal of those types of initiatives, as originally stated in the straw man document, is, quote, as VA facilities become obsolete and are underused, they would be closed when availability and accessibility of care in the community is assured. Those policies serve not only to dismantle the VA, and start the health system down to a road to privatization. I just want you to know I will not support them and I will fight them with everything I have. Um, so I want to ask you, why are you agreeing to pursue those unacceptable policy options? Well, um, first, first of all, I appreciate you sharing your thoughts and as clearly as you have. Uh, I share your goal. I am not in support of a program that would lead towards privatization or shutting down the VA programs. What I am in support of is using pilots to test various ideas about governance, about the way that the system should be organized and the way that we should evolve, because I don't know without testing different ideas whether they're good ideas or not. We do not recommend, uh, we did not take those principles and recommend that's how the VA should be organized. I do not believe that. but. What we are open to in the spirit of um, innovation and in the spirit of testing different ideas and different pilot sites. Um, but I do not want the consequences that you talked about. And one of the reasons why this is early on and we want to get feedback from all of you is to make sure that even the things that we're piloting are things that we want, we want to drive them towards desired outcomes. So I'd be glad to work with you on those. Um, but I do want to make sure, since I don't think we're going to get everything in this piece of legislation that we're ultimately hoping to get to in terms of a desired result, I want to make sure that we give ourselves room to innovate and to test new ideas. Well, D Dr. Yahai, these types of proposals didn't appear in your earlier drafts of the plan uh, for a new non-VA care plan. Why, why the change? Uh, I think they're more of testing these different ideas. So when you think of how the Center for Medicare and Medicaid, their innovation center, this is a little bit of how these pilots are designed after. That, that body of CMS is really driving innovation in healthcare. They're testing value-based models, they're testing accountable care organizations, and they're figuring out what works. And those things that work, they're spreading across. So I think in the spirit of innovation and testing out different ways to integrate with the community, it makes sense to, to see if it works or it doesn't work. Well, here, here's what's missing from the conversation, is how you plan to actually build and strengthen the VA system for the long term. You, you've not put forward a comprehensive plan to do some of the things that the VA really needs to do, uh, get more frontline providers, increase appointments, expand services, build and upgrade facilities, bring more veterans into the system. Those, to me, are the things that you do if you're trying to build and strengthen the VA system that we have that veterans want. The proposals that you have lead to me as singularly moving us in an opposite direction. And, and if you propose to only invest, invest in certain select types of care like TBI or PTSD or polytrauma or prosthetics, hospitals can't be viable um, when you invest in only a handful of lines like that. So let me ask you the question reverse. How are you going to build a comprehensive VA system? Well, um, Senator, I think what you've just outlined is our agenda to be able to build up and strengthen the system. We call it modernize the system the way that you have. About uh, 10 days ago, I gave a comprehensive report on 13 areas of risk. They included exactly what you said, what we need to do to make this a stronger uh, system that's going to be sustainable into the future. So that is my goal. That's the only thing I'm trying to do. I do believe, though, that you make a stronger system by giving your patients, your customers more choice. That's how I believe every, cus every company has improved their product 
and has differentiated if you successful. only give yes. your customers a choice to get out, you're going to rob the resources from the system that we need to make sure is couldn't, working. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. And in fact, that's why we are not recommending that this be an unfettered choice program in 2017. I hope that we will get to the point that I do believe that VA has the investment that it needs to become the modern system that it will be able to successfully get okay, patients I, in I, and out. I have one more area I want to cover. Yep. You know where I'm coming yes. from. Um, and I, I want to also add I'm really concerned that the VA is continuing to propose billing veterans private health insurance for care for service connected conditions. In your draft veteran care plan, you propose charging veterans $50 for walk-in clinic care. Um, your requested bill language no, puts no cap on how high you could make those co-payments and would allow you to charge veterans for service-connected care. So I am deeply concerned about that. And I just want to ask you, do you think it's appropriate to break the nation's long-standing commitment to provide care for injuries received in military service and ask veterans to foot the bill? Well, well let's make sure that we have the same understanding. My understanding is we did not ask to bill other health insurance for service-connected disabilities. So, so that's not what we're proposing, uh, and I don't know why well, there's it, confusion over that. Well, you, you do propose charging veterans $50 okay. for walk-in health. So, so a walk-in walk um, benefit is a brand new benefit. So we don't offer that today. So what we're talking about in this is expanding the benefit to provide veterans the ability to get convenient care in their neighborhoods. The way that we're proposing it is there would be no change in the copay or benefit structure for the first two visits of a brand new benefit. Following that, then after two visits, because there's a cost that we're, we're adding a benefit, but we can't add an unlimited new benefit. So after two visits, we would propose that there be a copay cost. But this is no takeaway. This is an added benefit because we believe it's the right thing to do. I, I think it is a break in the tradition, so I have deep yeah. concerns about that. I'm way over my time. 